Hey, it's me and welcome to my channel, The Way What Is Truth. Remember to like, subscribe and comment down below, okay, right? Now, I'm going to read out of the Epistle of Jude, right? The half-brother of Jesus. Now, um, I have read through this before, but this time I'm going to read it through without interrupting because I remember back last year, I think it was in March time last year, I read this through, but I kept sort of adding my own input. So I want to go over certain parts of the Bible, which are my favourite parts of the Bible, without interrupting. And yes, this is one of my favourite parts, the Epistle of Jude. Anyway, uh, I'd just like to take this time to ask how you are, the viewer, and um, I would like to ask you to check out as many of my other videos as possible. Look, I know we're busy. I'm busy, you're busy, most people are quite busy, so yeah, uh, I'd appreciate anyone taking the time to check out my vids, every like, comment and subscribe, it means such a lot to me. Right, so, now, you will see why this is such a great part of the Bible, okay, it's only two pages long, or at least I think it is, let me just check, yeah, the Epistle of Jude, yes, okay, so, uh, right, and it's... It's really, really good, so just listen carefully and definitely reflect on what I'm going to say right now. Or should I say what I'm going to read out of the Bible. Right, the Epistle of Jude. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Okay, so a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Ah, yes, yeah, so, so, so he was the half-brother of Jesus. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comments, but I'm sure he was the half-brother of Jesus. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. To those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. Right? Mercy, peace and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to, to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though you want to know this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgments of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority and speak evil of of. Uh, dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, did not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, May the Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have, have run greedily in the error of Balaam, the prophet, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feasts, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame. Wandering stars, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesies about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with tens, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgments on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them, of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way. 
and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, com the, the, these are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the, uh, by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts? These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy, to God our Saviour, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Now that's quite a lot to reflect on, isn't it? The Epistle of Jude. Some interesting parts I'd just like to mention. Here, uh, Jude 4, the certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we've got to be so careful about the people who are in our own churches. Of course, not all Christians go to church regularly on the Sunday. In fact, as Christians of a church okay wherever two believers come together that can be called a church even one small living room can be called a church okay but, but but nonetheless we need to be careful who we take into our circles because there are people out there who are ungodly and turn the grace of our god into lewdness and deny the lord god and our lord jesus christ there are even unbelievers out there who enter into churches out of curiosity, they may enter into groups with bad intentions, there have been cases of unbelievers and people who believe in a higher power as well, uh, and even atheists, uh, um, you know, joining Christian groups, it may be a man, for example, who, who sees a Christian lady who, who he thinks, oh, she, she looks a bit soft, she, she looks like I can take advantage of her, and so they're crafty, we've got to be careful, that's just one example, okay, and uh, this world's full of men and women, in fact, that try and corrupt Christians, okay? And just, they do it for the heck of it sometimes, just to, it's hard to explain, but there's a lot of unbelievers and atheists and those who believe in a higher power who do join in with the church and with other Christians, but they've got bad intentions. And these people, a lot of the time, unfortunately, are beyond salvation. Not always, but sometimes they are. We've got to be careful who we keep, who, what, what company we keep. As wise as serpents, but as innocent as doves, is how God wants us to be. And then, um, yes, Jude 7, this is another interesting part. I mean, all of it is interesting, obviously, but yes. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, or sought forth, or, or set forth as an example, suffering the, aven the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah, I don't know if you realise this, but if you go there today, there is literally brimstone everywhere where Sodom and Gomorrah used to be. It's like white, chalky, sandy stuff, and it just basically falls apart on your fingertips. So, yeah, the Bible was completely correct about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and how it was destroyed. I'm guessing it was asteroids from outer space that just hit that city like crazy and burned it all up. I could be wrong, uh, but, um, but yeah, if you go to the original site of Sodom and Gomorrah, all the evidence and proof is there. Uh, in this world, you'll find that we all have the same evidence. We all have the same fossils, the same ancient civilizations, the same ruins and, and, and all the rest of it. 
but it's how we interpret that evidence sometimes, you know, it's how we interpret it. A Christian may go to the original site of Sodom and Gomorrah, for example, and, and think, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, all, all this brimstone and that, it, it, it's literally everywhere. It's like a white, chalky substance, it's like, it's, it's, it, it's like powder, you know, it's everywhere, just like what, what's written in the Bible, what happened to it. But an atheist may come along, or an unbeliever, think, oh, well... Maybe it was a volcano or something, or maybe this happened, or maybe that happened. But there were no volcanic activity during that time. I've done my research into this. Trust me on that one. Anyway, let, let, let me just uh, keep reading this. Jude. Jude 8. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. <laughs> well, what more can I add to that? But this is interesting. Jude 9. Yet Michael, yet even Michael the Archangel, in contending with the devil, or Satan, who used to be Lucifer, which means a light bearer, of course, uh, once, uh, you know, a, a full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, quite possibly the angel that was closest to God. Jesus used to call Lucifer his brother before he fell away from grace. Um... So yeah, it says here, Jude 9, yet Michael the archangel in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, no one knows for sure why he was disputing about the body of Moses and why he wants to know where that body was. If anyone's got any ideas or just so happens to know why the devil was disputing with the archangel Michael about the body of Moses, then let me know down below in the comment section because I'd be very interested to hear anything about that. Anyway, it goes on to say, did not bring against him a reviling accusation. The Archangel Michael, even. Have you got any idea how terrifying the Archangel Michael is? I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a friendly dude to, to Christians and true believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you ever see it, you know, he's more or less as described. He's got a blue tunic. I think he's got blonde hair, uh, sandals, you know... It, I don't know, he, he's loads taller than that. I mean, he's, he's somewhere between, uh, maybe between eight and ten foot tall, maybe something like that. He, he's a big guy, he's terrifying. And yet, yet my, and yet, Michael the Archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, did not bring against him a reviling accusation. The Archangel Michael didn't dare bring a, an accusation against Satan. He didn't dare do it. But said, the Lord rebuke you. Now think about that one. I won't, add, I won't add any more to that, but just think about it carefully, right? And, uh, yeah. And then it goes on to say, but these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, meaning the natural man, because the natural man doesn't believe in the spirit. They don't even know what spirit is. They just believe in the flesh and what they can see, hear, touch and smell. That's what it means here. When they say, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, or like, like animals, yeah, in these things they corrupt themselves, lust, gluttony, drunkenness, whatever. <laughs> Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have ran greedily in the error of Balaam, the prophet, and perished in the, in the rebellion of Korah. Now, I don't actually know what the rebellion of Korah is referring to, so definitely let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, so yeah, now let me just read through. Ah, here we are, June 16. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own looks. How many people among us are, gr are grumblers and complainers? I myself find myself grumbling and complaining about all sorts of things, so I need to be careful. <laughs> we all need to be. And then it goes on to say, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. You know, we need to be careful of people who try to flatter us, you know. If something seems too good to be true, then chances are it is. Um, and then it goes on to talk about how they'd be mockers in the last time, walking according to their own ungodly loss, these essential persons who cause divisions not having this spirit. We've got to realise that the vast majority of people in this world are driven by their basic base desires, hunger, thirst, sexual appetite, that kind of thing. They don't have a spirit, and they'll just cause divisions because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They're not believers in Jesus Christ, they're, and they're certainly not filled with the Holy Spirit. 
and they may become interested in, in uh, religion and the church and Christianity on a superficial level. There's so many people who call themselves Christians out there who aren't really Christians. They just say it. They say, oh, oh, oh I'm Catholic, I'm Protestant, I'm Christian. That's really they're nothing of the sort. They've got no real relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ whatsoever. And even me, as flawed as I am, believe me, uh, I am struggling with my own sins and my own flaws as a person. And I actually worry about myself from time to time. But I know I'm a real believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. But we need to be so careful uh, because we are going to come across people that cause divisions. Because if we don't have the spirit, they're going to be... Um, complaining and causing divisions and picking fault until we die these people because that's just how some people are and then it goes on to say but you beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit keep yourselves in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life and on some have compassion making a distinction so we need to tell the difference between an unbeliever who is beyond hope but only god knows if someone's beyond hope or not but if someone keeps rejecting the gospel and doesn't want to know then it's not a good idea to keep on talking to them about it you know so and we need to have compassion making a distinction with some other people but others saved with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment defiled by the flesh even the clothes that they're wearing uh, but that's how seriously we should be taking sin and now i'm just going to read this last part and end end the video i hope you've enjoyed it and now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to prevent you uh, and, and to present you faultless sorry before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy to God our Saviour, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. All right, so yeah, uh, the book of Jude is definitely very, very interesting. I thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care and bye-bye.